right. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Benoit. Of course, I'm in my office, and I am so happy to have Larry Oaks with me tonight. So, Larry, how are you? Man, it's California and the COVID-19 era with forest fires all over the place. It's a little brutal, but otherwise, uh, I mean, up till the last couple of weeks, um, I've been personally, I'm personally fine, you know, health-wise and everything else. But yeah, when the air goes, it's playing saxophone's a bad idea right now. So, <laughs> so, so you're in California, and uh, where are you in California? In Northern California, or? Yeah, I'm in uh, Berkeley, which is about an hour and a half by car from Santa Cruz, where all the where the one of the big fires is, and an hour from Santa Rosa, which is right around where that other big fire is. And so it gets pretty smoky here, although right now it's looking pretty good up there. I actually see some blue, but the last two days have been rough. Yeah, well, I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, you know, the fire stays away from anywhere where you are. And, you know, in no fact, kidding. anywhere where anybody is. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, um, so what have you been doing this past few months? Well, um, you know, I've been uh, trying to readjust uh, to uh, the fact that I uh, really need to do some rehearsing with people online and stuff like that. So it's about trying to figure out all the tech around that and talking to people about it. I mean, you know, I've always been uh, gone with two things. If I want to record, I've gone to a real recording studio where somebody really knows what they're doing. So I can just worry about the music. And basically performance wise, I like to be on tour whenever I can. And so all of a sudden it's like, everything's coming to me from here. Although I have to say recording wise, for anything real, I'm still, I'm just gonna wait. But we did do some, I've done some remote mixing with engineers that turned out really good we've got a couple of cds lined up for this that and the other thing you know and coming out next year and i've been able to work on that so i've been working on that and you know just trying to figure out uh moves moves to make and talking to people about uh booking things that have, uh, this this 2021 season was going to be pretty busy and now I'll tell you, one of the things I'm really doing is uh, reverting to my 1960s pose of being more of a political person than a musical person. Um, I just feel like this time I've got to participate. You know, I can't sit on, I mean, I'm certainly not, you know, I'm just being a worker ant, but I've got to, I've got to get I've got to get involved in a few campaigns around the country where people, you know, need some help. So I'm trying yeah. to do that. So as uh, let's, if we revert back to like the tech, the tech, uh, you know, I, I am starting to explore Jack trip, which uh -huh. is, so that's something you might look into just if you're interested in rehearsing with other people or, or playing with other people, uh, with, along with video, as long as you're in within like a 400 mile radius, mm -hmm. you can play without any lag. And so, and that's pretty cool. Well, uh, let me, let me just say to you, because I, I know nothing about this, but Raskin from Rova, John Raskin mm -hmm. is, you know, doing a really good research and I'm kind of following his marching orders basically, but he's kind of hot on something called quack trip, which is like, a guy, I mean, you'd have to talk to him, but there's somebody out here who knows the guy who put Jack Trip together, who's kind of building on that, using the base of that with the blessings of the original guy and trying to come up with something that's even a little better. Um, well, and, yeah. definitely Jack Trip, like it's the user interface and like the, how to use it. You have to, like three different softwares going on, like command uh -huh. line, like, you know, like real archaic user interface, really hard to use. So in fact, yeah, I hope somebody comes up with a similar technology that's easier to use. Yeah. Just because like I we have not like this is something we might want to explore as as a as an organization, but it's so complicated. We could get it to work, yeah. but then you have to explain to musicians how to how, how to make it work. And if it's too complicated, it's just not practical. 
I yeah, and in fact, John, yeah. oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, because you, we were doing musicians and, you know, usually the higher quality of music that they make, it doesn't necessarily correlate with the higher uh, uh, comfort level with tech, you know, and, and especially computer-based tech. And so, you know, anyways, that's a whole different conversation. But, uh, you know, one that we, we've been like kind of looking into just in case this thing turns into a like, really long-term um, thing but you know definitely right now like we're doing other different things like um, you know intensive residencies with very few people things like that like we're you know trying to go more more interdisciplinary um, this kind of thing the art education platform like everything is going online so we're working really really hard to uh, to do that and we 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 have been like you know we put out some books and stuff like uh, oh really you know like uh a piano anthology and some uh, uh, you know music compilations and things so anyways you you've uh we're, we want to talk about rova about uh and and because of course we're broadcasting uh, uh rova the rova quartet uh concert you did in 2018 right. uh, on friday and we want people to watch it so rova of course is a long-standing group right. that is i suppose um tours intermittently so tell us a little bit about the group how it came about and how long it's been together well we came together uh, i got a phone call from bruce ackley in august of 1977 to perform at a a, a small festival local festival he had this idea why don't we get a saxophone quartet together play this one concert it'll be a lot of fun so the concert was supposed to be October 1st and it was August. So we thought, okay, we'll rehearse. Everybody bring a piece or, you know, get something together in the next three weeks. We'll rehearse a few times and we'll go do the gig. Um, we got together, uh, everybody, uh, it was John Raskin, who's still there, Bruce Ackley and myself, we're all still there. And uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning, a guy named Tony Blaze, who, uh, was there playing for to be baritone player and the festival for whatever reason we we were into it about three or four rehearsals and it's really feeling pretty good this was a pretty interesting thing and the festival was postponed till ended uh beginning of february for some reason i couldn't possibly remember now so all of a sudden there was three months and we you know it just kind of got about somewhere in there about November, Tony had to bail out. And so we found another guy who was really interested, but he was an alto player. So Raskin switched to baritone, which I don't think he ever really played. I, he borrowed mine and uh, he's been playing it ever since. We did that concert in February and I used to, prior to that was working on a FM, radio station in Philadelphia and it was had a great jazz you know collection and blues collection there and we did this gig and I listened to the cassette and I thought I don't think I've ever heard anything like this before this is really pretty great interesting stuff so at that point that was 1978 February 78 and it was just kind of at the beginning of the independent record stuff with new music distribution service in new york starting to i don't even know if they i think they were up and running you know being a distributor for people who were making their own lps and i said why don't we keep doing this for like six months and see where it goes and shoot for like doing a recording and if maybe it'll be as good as we think it is we should do that so we did that and um that took us till about the end of may beginning of june and somewhere in there uh charles bobo shaw who's a drummer in new york who's actually uh at that point the uh boyfriend of my sister um told you know i played him a cassette and he said why don't you give me a copy of that oh no he just said you should send that to this festival in in germany they like uh, they like to get new stuff, they might be interested. And so I flipped it in the mail, like in April, just to, you know, cassette. <laughs> and um, the, uh, the story goes that 
sometime during the festival, which uh, it's always six weeks after Easter in uh, Moors, which is near Cologne, they like the guy pulled the cassette out of the out of the you know the packet and like flipped it on and Braxton was sitting next to him in the office and they started playing it like what's this and Braxton said whoa you've got to bring these guys to this festival you know he was you know Braxton so effervescently uh, um, positive and everything and the guy wrote me a letter later that summer and just said you know we'd like to have you next year and at that point we had some other reason to stick together for another year. And at that point we thought, okay, maybe we should put this record out. And so we've been here ever since. Um, I gotta admit that it started out really fast. It felt like, and you know, when we got to that festival, we were going from playing for 30 people to playing for 5,000 and it went really well. And the, you know, the promoter came up to me and said, we're gonna bring you back next year and put a tour together for you, which, cause they were doing touring at that point too. And I stood there and I thought, man, this jazz thing, why, why is it so hard for these guys to like make a living doing this? In another couple of years, we're gonna be like, you know, it's gonna be so easy. <laughs> and man, it was like the worst hubris, most hubristic thought of all time. You know, I've been paying for it ever since. <laughs> so yeah, we, we tour intermittently. We tour two or three times a year. and. Um, it's never, there have been really good years, but it's never been, you know, not, nothing like being a rock band. But everybody's committed to it and uh, a lot of great music, that's all I can say. It's a very interesting group. Now, talk to me a little bit because you've played all over the world with that group and with other groups. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the experience at Timuco in particular. Like, so it's a small space with a smaller crowd how does that compare you know like how does it change the way you play the acoustics the, all of that stuff like of course you're playing like you know it's not like a a, a jazz quartet with the drums and everything uh, right. amplified and stuff so you can play like uh, festivals outside on rooftops like i've seen things in montreal with the world saxophone quartet all these like right. weird things that you can do with that kind of group that you cannot necessarily do with other kinds of group right. um so tell me a little bit about your experience at Timuqua. Well, I mean, Timucua is like, you know, we're completely dependent on the acoustics of a room. I mean, we've played in every kind of performance space from jazz clubs to, you know, cafeterias at schools to a place like yours, which is just like walking into, for a saxophone player, it's like walking into heaven. You know, it's just sounds so great and we can do anything we we anything we have in our repertoire we can play there um so we can really you know ch uh choose and not and know that the the room supporting us and really for us i mean musically speaking timiqua is really you know the ideal space including size wise i mean maybe it could be you know i mean up to 200 people we're really good we don't need to worry about anything in a room like that and um er, you know in this everybody can hear everything we're doing up there and i mean out in the audience and um it's just uh you know and you can play a sound and it just sits there if you want it to sit there it'll sit there for you and um yeah um and then of course the other thing is we're acoustic so i'm not fighting you know i've been in orlando with nels klein and gerald cleaver and i love playing in that group and you know i would pay to play in that group but don't tell anybody that but <laughs> but but yeah there are nights where you know if i'm in a dead room with those two guys i'm in real trouble because i of course I have a monitor, but it's just, you know, the, the thing of being able to just play a sound and have a presence and feel like, um, you know, I'm occupying the space when I'm being kind of run down by 
some guy with 45 foot pedals and you know his own ampl amplification where he just goes <laughs> he turns up um it's uh it's a challenge yeah um, I've whereas played with, i've played with a lot of fusion bands and all kinds yeah. of things or you know through the years and it's funny because i play trumpet everybody thinks oh man he always hears himself play you know but my bell is like two feet from my face and it's pointing that way exactly if, if i don't feel an impact of what i'm doing then what am i doing there like i just strain you know and i'm forcing th things and i you know i i spend hours a day practicing even now i practice every day to try and get a good sound and whatever sound i want to get yeah. and yeah. then i don't know if i'm getting that like so my mind starts like brrr, it's like how am i supposed to make music you know it's like so yeah. that's why i designed this place the way it is just because i mean we couldn't make it any bigger in that on that land you know that we have that's why it's the, the size it is but there is so it, it could have it could have been a longer kind of like you know dk or reverb mm. you know whatever mm. but at least every single thing you do you feel like you're having an impact and your yes. contribution is important just like in life you know yeah like your, your contribution is important and it's valued because of the audience that's there but it's like and then you can also hear everyone else's contribution equally to yours without any um, amplification if there are not if there's not and if there is still the same thing like it's just yeah. the way i set it up so because i fought for this for you know 40 years now i've been fighting for 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 that so i i wasn't gonna you know design a place that doesn't allow for that like you know what i mean like so this is where that's where it came from and i'm happy that you appreciate it of course because everything i have and i had and i will ever had went into this place and so uh, yeah you know i want this to work like i want this yeah, to, work no. to as many people as possible so that place really works i mean as far as i i can't imagine that there's a musician anywhere who wouldn't really love playing there so and well, you know good. <laughs> yeah. so um now tell me a little bit about um what your plans are for the future i mean i i know it's hard to do right now but um but you you know you probably have a plan a and a plan b right now as far as 2021 and and maybe beyond yeah i mean you know, I'm actually taught, I had a tour that was pretty well set up for this September with a, a band, a trio with uh, Mark Dresser on bass and a, a drummer from, from uh, Vilnius in Lithuania named Vladimir Tarasov, who's pretty well known over in Europe. And we were going to go in September over there. And in, I don't know, April, I knew it was not going to happen or in any case i knew i didn't want to work on it anymore because it sure didn't look like it was going to and so we i thought about well by april of 2021 there's a possibility and there was a festival in april that wanted the trio anyway and i didn't think we could go but but now if i just postponed the whole thing so i'm sort of working on that i mean you know Trump's not going to be out of office till January. That doesn't give them a lot of time to get it, get the United States to a place where Europe's going to want to let us back in. <laughs> so I don't know what, I, I'm not real optimistic about even that happening, but I, I'm hoping by the middle of next year, you know, by the summer, that uh, we're going to be able to like be, doing concerts in some fashion. I mean, I know already clubs that I've played for many years in Austria are are doing uh, shows with, you know, half the audience that they used to have. And since most of them are still somewhat supported by their cities or the country, they can afford to do that for a while. And, and you know, Austria wants them open. So, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing around with that in my mind, but um, it's still tricky. So I'm, you know, I'm getting involved through really with Raskin as the lead in trying to s set up as if this is going to be three years, you know, an another couple of years beyond that, which 
it might very well be. I mean, yeah, th this you know, is what this... a lot of people like. I'm glad you're talking about this because there's, there's a lot of people who don't realize that, you know, musicians who kind of self um, manage, and 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 managers and you know tour sure. managers and things like you guys are planning already always like like two years ahead of time sometimes more and like of course you're planning sh like short medium term and then long-term projects and that's like this whole situation has you know basically like put a halt to all i mean as as a no, no, all of that all of these projects like short term of course was and then yeah. but you know i know that as an as a venue like we have this one group like they've postponed now like eight times you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the tickets they sold out wow. so so they sold out like within three four days that they you know that they put we put the tickets out so now they don't want to reimburse everybody because they spent the money you know <laughs> right. so i'm sure and so so there's put they postpone and then they postpone again and every time i have to reorganize everything as they do because he has to reroute a tour yeah, and then yeah, yeah. it flops and then he does it again it's like it's insane the amount of work that's going into this because of this situation and the money doesn't come like you you you're working hard to make things happen in the future that doesn't pay you now you know yeah. and it's really hard and so that's why i hope that people will watch the concert and donate um and of, of course we're going to try now um uh, Chris Belt, our executive director, is kind of back into the picture now, and so we're going to set something up so that we, uh, the audience, can chat with as many of you as want to participate uh, uh, Friday night uh, during the concert, which is 7:30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and then, of course, the video will stay there afterwards. But I mean, we want people to watch it live because this is you can kind of feel the community when that happens. And hopefully people will uh, be generous because we're going to share that money with, with the group. And so uh, I know that you need it Thank now. You. And if not, just to for day-to-day -day operations to be to allow you to plan for the future because we want the music to continue. And then you know it's not a, a, a just a flip flip of a switch, and then all of a sudden a tour is is then you you know people want like people think that as soon as it's safe, they're going to see live music again it's not going to work like that. Like it's going to take a while to get groups going as far as routing tours and stuff. And so, I mean, locally, yes, but to get people from anywhere else, it's going to take a while for it to happen. Well, also it's kind of like, what is the definition of safe? You know, it's like, yeah. that's, that's in play too. It's yeah. kind of like, wow. Um, it's very tricky going at this point, but yeah man you know this is what we do so yeah. we're gonna have to work work with it exactly provide, well, so to speak. thank you so much for talking yeah thanks you've been very very, very generous and uh, everybody please go uh, to timqua.com slash events or our facebook page at timqua arts foundation or our youtube channel at so youtube.com slash timqua or timqua arts both of them work and you'll get to our channel and you'll find this event and hopefully you'll watch it be generous tell your friends and so that we can have a good audience for that. And uh, it's really interesting music. And I, I, I will watch it again, even though I've re-edited more stuff, like I made new videos and stuff. So uh, I'm always looking forward to li listening to you. And I can't wait to see you again when it's safe to do so or safer. Uh, we we hope hit. that you'll come back to Orlando soon. Oh, as soon as I can, really. Thanks, man. Uh, ciao.